One of the things my YouTube channel is well known for is the fact that I window manager hop a lot. <laughs> So I've probably used a dozen different window managers on the channel in the past two years. Eight or nine of those have been tiling window managers. And you guys often ask me, how do I configure XYZ window manager? Because even though I, I do show these tiling window managers in action, I don't deep dive into the configuration because to do that requires us to actually read through documentation, uh, look at all the available libraries, and get into some of the programming languages that these particular window managers are written in. But you guys, especially you newer to window manager users, you're not used to hacking on things, maybe you're new to programming, you're not exactly sure how to get started on hacking on these things. Today I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So I'm going to start with Qtile. Qtile is one of my favorite tiling window managers. It's written and configured entirely in Python. To get started, of course, you need to install Qtile. So if you're on a Debian or Ubuntu system, sudo apt install Qtile. If you're on Arch, you know, sudo pacman dash capital S Qtile. Uh, you could always go grab it from the official Qtile website, qtile.org. You could build it from source. I think you can install it with pip, with a pip install Qtile as well. So uh, it's easy to get it installed once you have Qtile installed. You're going to get a very plain default configuration that's not doesn't have a lot going on, and you're going to want to get started hacking on it right away. So the first thing I would do if I was new to Qtile is I would go to qtile.org. Bookmark this site. This is the official documentation for Qtile, and the documentation is really good. All you need to do, any questions you have, any concerns, just look it up in the documentation. You'll probably find it. The documentation for Qtile is really really good so say I, if i was unsure what the built-in layouts for qtel you know i could do a quick search for layouts and you know i have this layouts page here which looks like it's just telling me about the layouts library that's built in but here is the built-in layouts themselves and i can read that if i wanted to i could use floating bsp columns matrix max monad tall you know and a dozen other built-in layouts in Qtile. If I was unsure of what the default key bindings for Qtile were, well, I could do a quick search for default key bindings. It does a search and it comes up with default configuration right there. I click on that and what do you know? Right here, default configuration. We have this subsection key bindings and it tells me mod space switches focus between the panes, mod tab switches layouts, mod W closes a window, mod control R restarts Qtile, mod enter starts X term. So I'm going to switch to the desktop here, and this is Qtile by default, minus the wallpaper. Uh, may or may not look like this when you install Qtile. It may just be a solid color background, but this is the default configuration. It has a panel at the bottom. It's really hard to tell what the workspaces are because the font is small, but the workspaces are called A, S, D, F, U, I, O, P. So they are keys on the keyboard. A, S, D, F is on the home row on the left hand, and U, I, O, P is upper row from the home row on the right hand. And the reason is because if they were using the home row, you'd be on the H, J, K, L keys, which are the Vim keys, they're the navigation keys in most tiling window managers. So they shouldn't have used those. I'm glad they didn't. So A, S, D, F, U, I, O, P are your default workspaces. So if I did a super s you know that's the s workspace super d is the d workspace super f super i super o yeah super a back to the first workspace you will remember from the doc documentation that we looked up on qtile.org to open a terminal by default super enter and it is hard coded it expects you to have x term installed on the system so if you don't have x term installed install it most Linux distributions probably already have it installed by default. That's why they're using that one by default. So super enter should launch Xterm for a terminal. Now, once you have a terminal open, what you need to do is by default, Qtile is using a default configuration located in, I think, user share docs, Qtile, you know, some deep directory, you know, inside the root directory, basically. We need a config file of our own located in our home users directory. Uh, it's not there by default, so we need to copy the default config over to the home users config directory 
and then that file we can hack on, modify, change to our heart's content. And how you would do that is you need to run this command, sudo space cp for copy space. And then the location of the default config is slash user slash share slash doc slash qtile slash default underscore config.py space. And then where do we want to copy it over to? We want to copy it over to our home user directory. So I did the little tilde character slash dot config slash qtile slash config.py. Hit enter. It's going to ask for a root password. Go ahead and give it your root password. And now it copied the default config over to your home user's config directory. And now we can open that file, hack on it, and play with it, except we don't have permission to do that. We need to change ownership of that file as well. To do that, you need to run the command sudo choun change owner space. And in my case, my username is dt colon dt is also the group name for my dt user. And then I want to change permission for dot config slash qtile slash config dot pi. Hit enter. And, and we didn't have to enter our root password again because we had just entered it. So now that we copied over the default config to our home user's config directory, let's actually play with that file, hack on it, and modify it. So uh, you can use any text editor you want to. In the terminal, of course, you have nano as an option. You have vim as an option. I'm going to use vim because I think probably a lot of you guys by default probably stick with vim at first if you, because chances are you're installing this on a minimal install instance. You probably don't have any graphical text editors available just yet. If you do, you can launch one of them. You can launch gedit or genie or kate or whatever you want to, but I'm just going to do vim and space and then the name of our config file which was dot config slash qtile slash config dot pi hit enter all right i'm going to zoom in here well actually i'm in xterm I, I don't know if i can zoom in in xterm by default here uh, so what i'm going to do is well let's just briefly go over this config file like the very basics the top 20 lines or so all of these lines that begin with the hash symbol, the pound sign, the number symbol. Those are comments. Those are commented lines. They are not actual code. It's not code that's going to be executed in any way. These are just comments letting us know about the license of this program, uh, the warranty if there is one. It's showing us copyright. It is uh, giving us a list of people who have hacked on this file previously. So the first 20 lines are just comments. They're not anything we need to worry about at the moment. The next group of lines you'll see from libqtile.config, import, key, screen, group, drag, click. What is this? This is importing Python libraries that Qtile is going to need to use. So it's telling Qtile basically from this library, libqtile, you know, I want you to go and import these key, screen, group, drag, click, you know, these libraries that we're going to need to use for some of the magic in the config file to actually work. The next line that you may or may not want to play with is mod equals mod4. So mod4 is the Windows key, the super key by default on your keyboard. So if you are good with the super key being the mod key, you don't have to change anything. If you are one of those weird guys that likes to use the alt key as the mod key, and some of you probably do like to use the alt key instead of the super key, then you would change mod4 to mod1, and uh, there you go. Now your mod key would be the alt key. I don't like the alt key though. I like the super key. So I'm going to go back to mod equals mod4. The next section we have keys equals and then in brackets we have oh, about 15 lines or so that are key and then in parentheses mod k equals this, mod j equals that, mod control k equals this. This is your key bindings. So the one I want to change right away is I don't like xterm as my default terminal. xterm's fine, but I've been used to using st, so I'm going to change xterm to st right here in that line. So key mod return equals xterm is now mod return basically launches st, the st terminal. So I'm going to write that, and then how do we restart Qtile? Well, in the default configuration, when we read the browser, it said mod control r restarts the config but we could also just look in the config that we have open and you'll see key mod control r does a lazy restart that restarts our window manager so mod control r that restarted qtile and now mod enter instead of launching xterm should launch 
ST, and it does. This is my ST terminal. Mod W closes a window. Mod W closes a window. Mod Enter will get me ST back up. Now that I have ST as my default terminal, my ST key bindings will work. So now I can zoom in a little bit for you guys, and I can go ahead and reopen that QTAL config, and hopefully you guys can read this a little more. So again, the top we have the comments, and we're importing various Python libraries, we're setting the mod key, then we can play around with the key bindings. Playing around with the key bindings is pretty simple stuff. I'm not going to go over that in this video, we may cover that at a later time, but the one thing I think a lot of people will want to change immediately is the workspaces, which are called groups here in Qtile. So groups, you see this line, groups equals, and then in brackets, we have groups I for I in ASDF UIOP. That is the name of your workspaces or your groups, ASDF UIOP. Then you have a few lines up underneath it, basically saying that anytime you do the mod key plus one of these letters in this group, you switch to that workspace. So mod A takes you to the A workspace. Mod S takes you to the S workspace. And then the line up underneath it, you have key mod shift. And what that does, mod shift A sends a window to the A workspace. Mod shift S sends a window to the S workspace. So that is how that works, but you are not stuck with those default names. So uh, if you want to change this, you don't have to use characters on the keyboard as far as letters. You could use numbers as well. So I think most of you probably would prefer to do something instead of like ASDF. You would probably want to set your workspaces to be named 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll throw in a ninth one as well. And then if I write that and then Control R or Super Control R to restart Qtile, you will see that now the panel has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the workspaces. Actually, there's a little graphical glitch. It also still has ASDFUIOP in the bar. But if I exited out of Qtile and came back in, the panel would correct itself and we would just have workspaces one through nine and super one is one, super two is two, super three is three, super four is four, you know, etc. Back to super one. So that is just a very simple way to change workspaces. Now, are you stuck with using one character long workspaces? Well, you kind of are in the default config because the key bindings are set to mod plus whatever one character name of the workspace, right? Mod A takes you to workspace A or mod one takes you to workspace one. You can't really have like a word as the name of the workspace in the default config. Now, if you know a little bit of Python and you're not afraid to get in there and hack around a little bit, I can show you how I do it. I'm not a Python guru by any means, but we can hack on this a little bit to change these workspaces instead of being single digit character workspaces, we can change them to actual words. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and delete this line that says groups equals and then you know one two three four five six seven eight nine get rid of that line I'm gonna I'm gonna start a new line and I'm going to do def you know define and we'll do init underscore group underscore names in parentheses and then a colon and I'm gonna hit enter and let's do some brackets so I'm gonna do an opening bracket and later I will need a closing bracket and in between these brackets I created nine workspaces. This time I named them actual words. www, dev, sys, doc, vbox, chat, muse, vid, and graphics. And then you see in the little squiggly brackets, I set the default layout for each workspace. And by default, I set them all to be the max layout by default. Now you can change it. You can have each workspace to be set to a different default layout. But because we're still hacking on the default configuration by default there's only two layouts uh, in the default qtile config max is one and stack is the other so I, for now i just set them all to the max layout so that is uh, defining the init group names list there now the next section where mod and the name of the group takes you to that group it's no longer going to work, right? <laughs> because now we're no longer using single characters. So to be honest, this is not going to work. We should just delete it. So I'm going to delete those lines. And then instead, I'm going to write something else. Right, I did another def space and then init underscore groups, parentheses, 
and then return group name kwargs uh, with two asterisks in front of it. Basically, this is saying that I'm going to import uh, multiple variables into this, such as the name, the default layout, and what the default layout is. Then I created this next section, if name in the config file. <laughs> group names equals init group names, groups equals init groups, and then the next three lines are the most important part really because this is basically going to create, basically it's going to number our workspaces. So we have www.dev.sys.vboxchat.muse, etc. www is going to be workspace 1, dev is going to be workspace 2, sys is going to be workspace 3, and that happens because of these three lines here. So basically these 20 lines or so that I wrote from here to here are going to perform the magic where we can actually give our workspaces names, but those names still correspond to Super 1, Super 2, Super 3 on the keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably push this config to my GitLab page. I may create like a Qtile lesson repository or something. I'm not exactly sure. Look for it in the show description though and I'll even uh, leave comments. You know, I'll have the default configuration and then I'll uh, also leave a comment and this is, you know, the configuration I changed for those of you that are, you know, wanting to see this in action. So I'll leave a comment like changing the names of the workspaces. Anyway, I'm going to push all of this to my GitLab and uh, those of you that want to check it out, great. Those of you that are Python gurus, because again, I'm pretty much a noob <laughs> at Python. I know a, enough Python to kind of get by, but I am in no way, you know, a Python master. So if any of you guys want to, you know, give me tips on things to improve on the configuration, uh, feel free to do so. Before I go, I do need to thank a few special people. So this show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Stallman, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplow, Corbinian, Lambda, Liam, Mitchell, Natek, Rob, Robert, Sean, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. These guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about configuring Qtile wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other names you see on the screen, all those fine ladies and gentlemen that help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.